the IMF is issuing some dire warnings. Um, it's a bit of a mouthful, but this stark message is of looming inequality-fueled global financial disaster. So some of the most interesting things from this is a relatively short article from Common Dreams, but um, the IMS, IMF managing director, uh, Kristalina Georgieva, I'm sorry if I butchered that name, made these remarks in a speech at the Peterson Institute for International Economics in Washington, D.C. The theme of increasing uncertainty, some of which is driven by inequality, has already emerged from the new year, she said. So uh, trend, the trend of rising inequality within countries, she, she said, is reminiscent of the early part of the 20th century when the twin forces of technology and integration led to the first Gilded Age the Roaring Twenties, and ultimately financial disaster. disaster. Unlike the Twenties, however, this new decade is confronted with an urgent climate crisis. In the 1920s, she said, the financial sector will have to grapple with preventing traditional types of crises and handle newer ones, including climate-related shocks. Uh, think of how stranded assets can trigger unexpected loss. Some estimates suggest that the potential cost of de devaluing these assets range from $4 trillion to $20 trillion. So this is, I mean, infrastructure things, things that are going, that we need to keep society functioning. The, the cost of repairing or, you know, buttressing those things to, uh, you know, be able to combat climate change is only exacerbated by you know, income and wealth inequality and looming financial collapse. How do we as a society come together and say, hey, you know, we kind of need to build, you know, higher ramparts along our shores because of rising sea levels. We need to be able to rebuild our energy infrastructure because of this. And if we're facing a financial collapse because the ability for pushing money around in complicated ways to make more money is diminished, because it actually doesn't do anything, and we actually are in a time where things need to get done for people and stuff, that is going to be a, a huge problem. I like the comparison here with the Gilded Age. I feel like a lot of people forget that the type of wealth and income inequality during the sort of the age of the steel industry and the railroad industry and these, you know, your, um, your Rothschilds and your, some of the, those really big names, but there are other ones like the Vander, the Vanderbilts. Yeah, the Vanderbilts. Um, <clears throat> that, that's the some of the, yeah, uh, that's Sears, the yeah, Sears, Sears company. Robux yeah, thing. the, and they, they're a wonderful catalog. They used yeah. the rail system to get their goods to market and made lots and lots and lots and lots of money. Like that kind of wealth and income inequality uh, is not even the same as it as it was during the crash of the late twenties after the Roaring Twenties. It's it, it, that predated it, and I think that's sort of a similar era we find ourselves in now. And the IMF is not the kind of organization that usually is going to be one that says, "Hey, you know, make, maybe making money in the banks is like something we should cool off a little bit. Maybe maybe." Making sure that people have the infrastructure they need to have a thriving society is something we, the International Monetary Fund, should advocate for. No, usually they're, like, they're the institution that leaned up against uh, India and said, how dare you make so many solar panels? you got to buy oil from America. Right? How, dare, how dare you put clean water in toilets in your country so all these diseases aren't rampant? Yeah. So it's, I, mean, I don't know, it's weird. It's, it's almost... Um, it, it, it's uplifting to hear this message coming out of a group that normally is is like super pro banker. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. At least like, hey, the warnings are real. Everyone sees it. Uh, well, this confluence of wealth and income inequality and climate change is going to be disastrous. Well, so I find it very interesting that she tied in the Gilded Age, you know, and we're talking about the Industrial Revolution. And now we have the fourth industrial revolution coming and that at no point did she make reference to the dust bowls of the thirties. Mm. Um, you know, if, if we want a model, if we want any kind of historical evidence of what this might look like, the damage and just like the horrifying poverty that we might be up against, you know, with climate change and, uh, crops being infertile and things like that. We have, all the examples from history. The, the Dust Bowl happened in the 30s, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, like, when we're talking about the Great Depression and all these things, they're all, like, there's all historical similarities there. Right. Uh, I like, in this article, also, uh, a man named Eric LeCompte uh, chimes in. So he's with Jubilee USA. He's the director. 
And he says it would be unwise to let uh, Georgieva's comments fall on deaf, deaf ears. He says the IMF delivered a stark mes message about the potential for another massive financial disaster that we last experienced during the Great Depression. Also, um, a United States finance expert, uh, LeCompte, uh, says, with inequality on the rise and concerns of stability in the markets, we need to take this warning seriously. Trade problems and climate-driven weather events pose additional risks at this time. It's imperative that we ensure the financial sector is free of risky behavior and corruption if we want to protect ourselves from another global financial crisis. So this, in large part, echoes a lot of the economic financial concerns that Daniel and I have shared on this program over the last few weeks. Uh, we kind of, it's like, it's, we don't really know what the bubble is going to be that bursts. You know, it could be student loans, it could be the credit, uh, uh, credit card companies, it could be another mortgage crash, it could be all kinds of things, but we're, we appear to be over leveraged in a number of ways. And I, feel, I love that the IMF is at least sounding these alarm bells because they're the type of institution that gets taken very seriously by even, you know, the most cynical of financial experts. Can I ask you a question that, sure. we, that we haven't, um, <clears throat> you and me, offline haven't ever uh, talked about mm. do you ever listen to this and think that well the last time it happened it was a surprise and the time before that it was a pr surprise or the time after that uh like the, the housing market mm. and the 2008 crash it was a surprise but sort of we got through it i mean there are a lot of people that were hurt and i'm not minimalizing that um any by any means but to compare it to the great depression i don't know if that's exactly the same but do you think if maybe they're learning on how like they're learning slowly how to ease us into this kind of thing do you ever wonder if maybe we're lobsters in the pot and the water slowly boiling i think that's a good way of looking at it i think what's happening right now is a little bit similar to what happened in 2008, but potentially worse. So in 2008, it seems clear to me that Greenspan knew that this was happening, and that's why things like uh, the rates, that the, the ratings that we were getting from the rating agencies on the AAA bonds and credit default swaps and things like that were elevated, and everything got pushed until the very end, and then it, it kind of all crashed. And they, everyone that, that had credit default swaps and like financial instruments to try and protect themselves through this basically had a full year to sort their, you know, uh, their books out. And then there was going to be this bailout that was going to end up coming. It was sort of like it ended up happening in slow motion because there was a lot of denialism at the top. And I see something similar to that this time around. Like Daniel continues to note that we are pumping in the federally maximum allowed limit of uh, money is being pumped into the banking system on a daily basis, like in the billions of dollars per day, just money that the U.S. Treasury and Federal Reserve is pumping into the banking system. And most analysts will look at that and say, we're operating as though we're already in a crisis. And it's just we're happening, we're doing it really quietly, kind of inch things along. And then, you know, the people who get hung out to dry are not the bankers. They're not the mortgage brokers. They're not the people that caused fraud, right? They're going to get bailed out. Right. They're going to get their payday. They're going to they're going to make sure that they're afloat for their fraudulent behavior. The people who are going to get sold up the river are the regular everyday people, because if you get, you know, a couple hundred million of them, now you can pay for all the bankers losses. Anyway, what what uh, what kind of sauce do you think you're going to put on your billionaire? <laughs> Eating the rich over here. OK.